coming of the Holy Spirit that guides us to action and sets a flame to our hearts. Welcome this day, this beautiful day, this beautiful weekend, a time where we celebrate the coming of the Spirit, when we celebrate our gift and our freedoms that we have. And we remember those who offered that opportunity to us by giving up their lives, their time, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today, I invite you to think of a moment to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit here today within you and within me.
this holy house of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord.
um, directly for you to be able to see what actually happened and in a way have a sense of the gathering that took place. Ministry will be gathered. Sunday morning Bible study will resume for next week in the chapel. There is, um, there will be some, uh, some information coming out about what we do about people who are without homes, who are homeless, or people who are uh, struggling mentally um, here in the city. We've got uh, some concerns to talk about as a congregation, so I invite you to stay tuned. One of the later dates in June, our Bible study will talk about these issues, and I invite you to come an hour early and uh, spend some time together talking about this important issue. Uh, next Sunday, which is June 4th, already can you but summer is coming sooner than we can do it. So I invite you to mark your calendars if you haven't already and you are a council leader. We will be in Lutheran directly after worship, continuing a very fruitful and a very exciting um, conversation that we are having with our consultant, Beth Toller. So please put that on your calendar and we'll be filling it for next Sunday. <laughs> If you turn to the back of your bulletin, I think you may be having a location for that. Got my, got my information correct for the day. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will 
dwell in its spirit, and they shall not pass by. And I will show it portraits in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before coming of the Lord's great and glorious night. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
that's what we do. Yeah. We see them on Sundays, and sometimes we use bubbles for big celebrations. I love a bubble machine. If you ever have a bubble machine, then you just have to turn it on and just let it go, and you don't have to do this, which is quite fun. Here they go. So bubbles are for celebrations. Today is a celebration. There's red. I see red out there. Red is always a good one. So we use bubbles for celebration. Today is a celebration. Now if you turn around, you can kind of see now it's not real hot. But you know what you can do? You can do that. That's supposed to be the hot thing. If you've ever had a little bit of a fire or had a hot thing for a hot thing, you can do that. Have you ever seen a fire? We love fire. Well, today is a celebration and we're using fire because fire is, is the memory of the Holy Spirit. Can you see the Holy Spirit using spirit? Can you see spirit? Can you see anything? Can you see? Can you see the spirit from the dead? Can you see the dead? No. So we need the fire today. We're using it as a, as a way to remember. So whenever you blow your bubbles, think of celebration.
And finally, is it possible we can make similar connections with all of them? The coming of the Holy Spirit was indeed loud, wonders, powerful, amazing, all of those things. But was it really inviting? I mean, imagine being in that space, like, I mean, flames of fire coming down from the rest, like a lightning in the skies. Chaos, voices, words you didn't understand, words you might have understood, everybody speaking at once.
guarantee you pretty soon you will have to move. Half of your body will be more than delightfully warm while the other half will be cold. Fire causes us to move. So how is it that the flame of the Holy Spirit is causing us here at St. Paul's to move? Are we inviting and welcoming to others? Do we witness to the power Christ promised us in the Holy Spirit? There's been a couple of times, I distinctly can recall, that we've had visitors to worship with us. Did we say hello to them? Did we engage them with a hospitable welcome? Meaning more than just a nod? Did we witness in an authentic way to the gift Christ gave us when he ascended back to God? Did we move to authentic action? Did we show <coughs> I've also played another game with young people. It's called Who's Listening? Everyone puts their head on the table and closes their eyes. And then I pick someone to step out of the room and go on a walk or a bush. And then I invite the others to open their eyes and look around for who's listening. Who is listening? And how might we think about it? Why is it an important question? Why is it that we ask it? Or maybe we don't think it's an important question. Have we perceived Does flame to action move us to hospitality? Remember that the flame of Pentecost is the reminder that heaven and earth come together in heat and power. It's the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we love it. God is here. We need to know that. What do we do with it? calls us to move in hospitable and welcoming ways. Now, mind you, I'm not saying always peaceful. The Holy Spirit is not always peaceful. Sometimes we are called to things that make us uncomfortable. Let's move with heaven and earth come together. We can be uncomfortable. We can be warm. And then also,
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. For our prayers today, beloved, your response to my hear us, O God, will be your mercy is great. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equipped the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for pain. Hear us, O oh God, through our mercy. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fires, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all of us. Send your spirit of understanding to refugees, to immigrants, to any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely God, who is <coughs> with me, you are in <coughs> Hear us, O oh God. <coughs> God, you are merciful, and you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, and all those who care for those in need. Lord, we pray for all who seek your comfort. Lord, be with those that are on our prayer list. Be with those that we might not even know who need you. Be with, be with those in our house, Lord. Hear us, O God. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn, especially for those, for us to seek and to learn from those who are different from us. Make your presence known, Lord. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is worthy. Life-giving God, we give thanks for all those who have died to new life here. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service, and we thank them for their gift, and we thank them for their work. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you all.
and prayerfully growing form. Thank you for your gifts of time, talent, and treasure. And I invite you to keep your eyes peeled this summer for opportunities of those kinds of growth here at St. Paul's. So as you leave this place today, I pray that God lights a fire under us as a congregation. I pray that God lights a fire under us as people of Christ, of the blessing that we were given, to know the joy and the excitement and power of fire, but to also know that it can, it is not always peaceful. May the gift of the Holy Spirit alight on your heart and build a fire in your soul. Bless this house and those within. Bless our giving and receiving. Bless our words and our conversations. Bless our hands and recreation. Bless our sowing and our growing. Bless our coming and our going. And Lord, bless all who enter and Bless this house, O Lord, your peace and comfort. And now the God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live as a new creation.
Go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.